Whew. Hey guys, you do can do it here. Um, just a heads up, this is a react video regarding the, um, I guess the old, the Smash Ultimate character that was going to be revealed today. It's, uh, well on my time it's like 3.15. I had to miss out on the actual live stream this morning because, you know, I have, <laughs> I work in the morning so... Well, it's. I try to avoid spoilers as much as possible. I try to avoid, like, refrain from any social media, or or, or reading any any messages that I get from friends or other contacts. And I've been pretty much like in the dark for the most part. So I've been trying to ignore it as much as possible and just wait until I get back from work so I can actually record this reaction video. So I might as well, you know, get this thing over with. Already the title kind of spoiled it for me, but what can I do? Oh well, let's see what this character is all about. Hopefully it's something that's worth it. I'm already thinking this is probably another sword wielding character, obviously, so... Let's see what this is all about. Alright. Let's get this show on the road. Three, two, one. Let me increase the volume a bit. Let's go. Just by the name alone, just by the name alone, we know it's Fire Emblem. Does this have anything to do with the Fire Emblem Three Houses? I thought as much. I also do not wish to die. When it comes to Fire Emblem, I haven't really gotten that far, so I barely even like touched Radiant Dawn. So, yep. Son of a son of a gun. They actually had it to include the letter too. That's pretty cool. Violet, join Smash House. <laughs> it's I like how they actually make this serious. So we got another Fire Emblem sword wielder. Okay, bring it on. How many sword wielders are there total now? We already got the hero. We got several characters from. Uh, from Fire Emblem, we got Cloud, we got Shulk, Link, obviously. I mean, we got a lot. I see. Too many swordsmen, are there? And you, you wield the sword as well? What will you do? <laughs> so that is how you plan to win the day? So weird. Does this mean there's going to be a male and female version of uh, Violet? I think that's the... That, is that how you pronounce it? Not too far off. I mean, we do have a uh, male and female Trom, male and female Robin, or something like that. Choose your weapon. Byleth recruits Byleth. What? Okay, I think they're implementing a new mechanic now. So it's not just a sword wielder. Okay, finally, a little, a little variety. Well, this is gonna give Link a run for his money. And Link was known for being like the the Mr. Utility Belt guy, as in like you know he has all the variety, all the weapons at his disposal. Sword, axe, spear. Okay, bow. So yeah. A little variety with the two versions of Byleth here. The sword wielder and the multitasking one, you could say. I think that was a sword whip. Did I just see a sword whip? Whoa! 
What is this? Soul Calibur? A sword whip? Wow. Yep, three houses. I really need to get up to date with Fire Emblem. Radiant Dawn was one of the last games I played, and I haven't even finished it. Hey, Sakurai. Konnichiwa. Another Fire Emblem character. Why am I not surprised? Fire Emblem and Smash Brothers go way back, like melee, way back. <laughs> okay. Mispronunciation there. It's like chess. Shining Force is kind of similar, I think. Yeah, permadeath. That's, a pretty direct language. That's the the term. Yeah, so permanent death. It's it's common. Sleeping with the fishes. It's another <laughs> uh, an idiom you could say. Uh, your character should could fall in battle permanently. Yeah. Yeah, permadeath is a really big issue when it comes to the uh, earlier Fire Emblem games. They make just big. They make the game really harder, like harder than uh, than traditional ones. Hmm. Down special, okay. Okay. 17 games of Fire Emblem. Wow. Yes. Keep in mind, Fire Emblem has only been released internationally, I think ever since... Like post melee, okay. That was when the first uh, the first Fire Emblem games came out in the Game Boy Advance. Um, the first one with Lin, and the second one is the I forget. I think it was the Sacred Stones. The one where Roy was introduced was the Binding Blade. That was that was kind of a I don't know. The, the release was ignored for that one. So technically, there were three Fire Emblem games during the Game Boy Advance era. But only two of them were released internationally, which was pretty much the one with Lin, and the other one, which is the um, uh, the Sacred Stones. I only finished like that that one with Lady Lindis. That's like the only one. That that was literally my introduction to Fire Emblem. Evolution Gaiden, Holy War. Thurka 776 Binding bla Blazing Okay, there it is Yeah, yeah Shadow Dragon uh. 
good memory, man. Okay, I think that explains the gesture now, so let's see. Whoa, wait, hey. Okay. There you go. Then three houses. Okay, now I get why he does the gesture. Okay. So you saw how I was in a weird way, right? I was counting in binary. Oh. This is zero. Zero, one. Okay, okay, that's clever. Okay. You can actually count up to 31 on one hand. Okay, that's like using an abacus with only five fingers. Okay, I'll I'll say this. It's clever. And if you use both hands, you can count all the way up to 1020. A binary abacus. <laughs> I gotta learn that sometime. What is Fire Emblem Three Houses? In Japanese, the male version of the main character is called Beretto, the female version is called Beretto. Beretto. They share the same name, Violet. So Violet becomes a professor who ends up leading one of three academic okay. houses. Okay. Once you've chosen a house, you guide them through their school, and then, well, you end up fighting the other house. After a certain incident, five years of having to meet up with the other Wow. I understand the concept of Fire Emblem Three Houses. I played an early version of it before its release. So a three-way war. That's what Three Houses is. I've done the same thing before with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I couldn't wait until launch to experience it or we'd have never made it in time. Makes sense. For that title, I borrowed an early version of the game for two days and ran around all the areas of Salt Canyon to realize for the first time. I find it curious how he mentioned that he couldn't implement the Breath of the Wild Zelda for some reason and instead just went for like the um, A Link Between Worlds version of Zelda. I mean, I get it from his perspective. I mean, he could still pull it off somehow, but I think he made the right decision by sticking to the uh, Link Between Worlds version. It's a lot cuter, in my opinion. Spoilers for what? Before my demonstration, I should point out that when I did the Terry Bogart showcase video, I mentioned that it was recorded a month in advance. But this time, we have to account for the holidays and such, so we're filming two months in advance of this video. Huh. Right now, it's actually November. He filmed this in November, eh? Therefore, some of what I'm about to show you might differ a bit from the finished version. Okay, fair enough. As always, I'm using a special in-game camera <coughs> in-game camera okay let's see what we got challenger pack 5 byleth from fire emblem three houses joins the battle so this is our new fighter byleth <laughs> sadly they're lacking in mobility it's maybe a bit better than robin's but that's about all you can say for them throws are not their strong point either their grab lacks range but actually you could say that they're distance deep. i like the female design i'll say that the hero's relic they use You stole that from Ivy Valentine. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. For you stole that from Soul Calibur, I swear. They'll whip the sword upward to block enemies in the air. For their up air attack, they'll wave the whip sword overhead. 
I'll admit, that's pretty cool. Whoa, that's pretty cool. It was pretty terrifying how I knocked him into the air with that attack. And in addition... What? I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to go for a replay. That's like the equivalent of like bouncing off of an opponent. But it's like yoinking them down. Literally like pulling them down. I never thought I'd see someone use a sword whip as a hook shot. Oh man, that is awesome. Okay. Oh boy, this is going to trigger a lot of Marth mains. This is going to trigger them. You just counter their their aerial attacks here. This also has a long range. It'll connect to here. Also, if you have a hotel, it will be strong. Nice. And if you knock an opponent down, the side attack will be Excuse me. Hmm. By the way, the tip of the lens is more powerful. Okay. So the side of the Yeah, the side of the, the of the spear is a little weaker. That's why as a rule, one hit with the blade might be up. Okay. Or downward in this case. Nice. Upward swing with an extreme reach. Wow. For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it will still hit. Wow, it's got more range. Nice. Actually, you can smash the forward a little. Like this. Okay. But as you'd expect, you can easily shield it. Meteor spike there. Next is the down smash attack. A heavy swing of the axe back and forth. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch power. And for the down special, Violet channels all their energy into a devastating strike. Nice. It's a bold move, similar to the platform, but here's what makes it different. How different? When readying the move, there's a super armor effect. Okay. Wow. It's a bit slower than the top range, but due to the super I I'm gonna have to rewind a bit. He just countered wow. It's a bit slower than the It's a blink and you miss moment. Unless you can grass. Uh right. Another notable aspect is that it lets you pass through platforms. While you're charging up, you can breathe past platforms like this to reach a lower area. 
They won't let you jump, but you can use it as a surprise attack. Also, you can turn around during the movement. Okay. The swing takes a while. So if an opponent runs behind you during the move, you can quickly change direction. That's useful. Okay. Even though it can be Let's see. So kind of like DK's uh, down B in this case. So it's risk versus reward. I gotcha. At least this Fire Emblem character has a lot more variety. This is literally like the Fire Emblem version of Link. The only thing missing is a... I guess the only thing missing are bombs. Can't be released until the charge is complete. Okay. It's also very powerful. That said, you can still cancel out of the stance using the shield button. Okay, that's pretty cool. You can also change direction while in the stance. Nice. It works up until this point, but keep holding the button. You're hmm. Whoa! Did he just steal Zelda's arrow? Sorry about the noise in the background, guys. In other words, you're committed to fighting it. So you see, a situation like this is pretty terrible. Right, well, we've got the reflectors from uh, Fox McCloud here. Once you've entered the stand, you won't be able to do anything. Wow. Which means it's quite the risky attack to use against spiders who have a lose and reflector. But you can always just aim into the fray, as it is, after all, a long range move. Letting you deal with a sudden blow to opponents. Man. So you need to think carefully when using this projectile weapon. Violet's final smash is called the Genitor God Ruptured Heaven. In the original game, there's a move called Ruptured Heaven. This is an enhanced version. Nice. As you can see, you team up with the mysterious Sylvan and launch an attack together. Now, let's talk about the color variations. It's set up so that the default and odd numbered color Un variations are male, while the even okay. numbered ones are female. However, the third, fourth, and fifth colors are, as you can see, reminiscent of the house names. Those Interesting little touch there. something with so many sword fighters in smash i'm sometimes kind of wondering like okay what about a soul caliber character are we going to see that someday hmm. didn't we see this variation in the final smash next i'll introduce the stage hmm. for this one we of course tried to recreate the place where you spent <coughs> Okay. This is how Garrett Monastery is laid out in the original game. From these, we 
chose to have it cycle through the marketplace, reception hall, bridge, intermediate, all in one stage. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. Let me introduce each of the guests that appear in these four areas. The first area is the marketplace. I think this is where a lot of people go to go shopping. The guests hmm, that are okay. are students of the Blue Lion's house. Dimitri, Dedu, Dimitri. and Ingrid. Not Dimitri, Dudu, or Ingrid. Their <laughs> names are a bit difficult to say. They're largely from the Holy Kingdom of Clarkus. Since it's a kingdom, that means they have a monarch. For that reason, I guess you okay. could say Dimitri is the future king. He had quite a difficult life and may or may not end up with just one eye. He's an unfortunate one, though. Wow. There are vendors on his fate may differ. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things, but uh, uh My yeah. shop! See. If you do break them, the stage will expand to the left and right. Uh, I hope they have insurance. I'm noticing a lot of Fire Emblem yes, levels like implement that kind of platform. From the, the last uh, Smash Brothers games. Edelgard, Petra, and Dorothea. They embrace their military might. Huh. Edelgard is one of the characters who is central to the conflict. Depending on the path you take, she'll go through some terrible ordeals. Okay. You'll notice there are prominent chandeliers above the stage. It's possible. Our platforms, yeah. However, fire can't actually reach it, even though it's their stage. That's ironic. So you need a bit of a helping hand there. Like so. Tables can also be broken. <laughs> Just like nice. the sign that reads Hooting Cousin in the Sudaku Castle stage, it can break if you launch the opponent into it at close range. Okay. Next up, the bridge. The camera rotates 90 degrees, creating this long area. It's very wide indeed. Nice. It's similar to the bridge of Elden stage. The guests are from the Golden Deer, Claude, Hilda, and Lawrence. They belong to the Leicester Alliance. Okay. Because it's an alliance of many noble families, you could say that they have a wide assortment of members. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. I'm gonna have to play three houses someday. Just like the Alden Bridge. Man, that, that arrow packs a punch. Pose that she's making, yeah. All that has a beast platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. 
It'll cycle through each location in about two minutes. Let's see, Byleth in action. Okay, today we'll have a tactic battle in Squad Strike with the DLC team pitted against Fire Emblem Protector. <laughs> What the heck? And hero. Then what's the point? Gee, we really made a lot of fun. Banjo. By now, I think you know what I'm doing. Yeah, I was just trying to Basically, like reach the very end. All five opponents with just the professor. But as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle. So I'm using anything I can get my hand. It's not going to land that easy. So you made everyone else throw in the towel while Byleth just takes them all. Okay. Okay. Stay away from those bombs. Oof. Okay, come on. Goal out of nowhere. Let's see. Good. The party ball. <laughs> Mother brain? Perhaps? You're in a good spot, Mom. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have taken that. Gardevoir. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. At this point, it doesn't matter if Gardevoir is there or not. Final smash. Get the smash ball. Oh dear. Come on. You got lucky. Another one? Oh, just get the hammer and get it over with. <laughs> I always get. I always gotta chuckle every time when I hear the the hammer song. Kind of a cheesy victory, but hey, whatever. It's his game. I'm not complaining. Song collection. Now, about the additional music. Since it's from the Fire Emblem series, we'll be adding each of the new tracks to all the Fire okay. stations. There are already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks in the game. A selection of this time is the main take of those existing tracks. Mm. Mm. Nice. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both Japanese and English. I hope you'll enjoy these as well. We're also adding in new spirit board. Okay. House leaders among some of the other popular characters. <coughs> also, there's a new classic world round. Heroic Legacy Rocks. Which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stations from throughout the series' history. The final battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand, but you'll find that something pretty amusing happens, so look forward to that. Hmm. Now for the Mii Fighter costumes. Please take a look. Okay, more Mii Fighters. Let's see. Yeah, I'm a little mixed that we get to see another Fire Emblem character in Smash. I mean, I get it, but at the same time, it can get a little overcrowded. An Assassin's Creed reference? Or Altair, okay. I was about to say. Sorry, I saw the hood, I thought it was Assassin's Creed. Rabbit! Oh, hey, um. That's Rayman. 
That's a Rayman reference. Okay, the Ravage suit. Okay. What else we got? Mega Man X. Zero. Yeah, zero. It's, uh, X, I mean. Sorry, by mistake. I was thinking zero is like the, the one with the, the red helmet. X is the gunner. Okay, yeah. <laughs> sorry, my confusion. Oh, Battle Network. Okay. Mega Man EXE. Pretty cool. I like the design. It works. Wait, what? You're kidding me! Oh my god! Cuphead made it to Smash as a Mii Fighter! Unbelievable! Where's Shantae then? Oh, wow. Sakura, you never cease to amaze me, man. Cuphead, for those who aren't familiar, it's like a run-and-gun shooter. Kind of like Contra. I recommend it. Just to point out, for those who aren't familiar with Cuphead, it's this run-and-gun adventure, and it's kind of influenced by like 1930s cartoons. It has a very unique art style, that's kind of like the uh, the silly symphonies, merry melodies cartoons of the 1930s, 1940s. It has a retro feel to it in terms of animation quality, and it's at the same time it feels modern, and it's amazing. Not to mention that the game is hard, like you have no idea. I mean. Like Nintendo hard in terms of difficulty. After purchasing a costume, I recommend using the sharing feature. If someone has created a Mii Fighter, you can play using the costume that's wearing immediately after you download it. Cool. And now, on to the Amiibo. Simon. Oh, that's Richter Belmont and Dark Samus, huh? Dark Samus. Pretty good, doesn't it? I like that one, yeah. I'm surprised Amiibos are still a thing. But if they exist for a reason, aside from Smash, huh. It's now complete. Nice. $24.99. But I must say, this game has always exceptional experience. And since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start, we intended to make the most out of the unique and mechanics and so on. Wow. There really were a lot of new mechanics right there. When we add a new fighter, we don't simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. This game just gets bigger and bigger, man. It's amazing. How many more? Okay, how many more slots are there? Let's see. Five more, huh? Six more. Bring it on! Let's go! Volume 2. Take your time, man. This is just amazing. Like last time, I'd be very grateful that despite that, you would understand why. Take your time. Furthermore, the new additions have already been decided. Even if I receive many requests regarding potential candidates on Twitter, I'm afraid it would be very hard to consider them. 
Okay. A Rex costume. Ooh, nice! Breath of the Wild reference? Cool! Nice! Purchase bonus, huh? Okay. And rightfully so. Personally, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. <laughs> he still questions it? It seems like Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Brothers Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. Surpassed it, practically annihilated it. Keep in mind, Capcom can get a little greedy with its updates. With like so many versions of Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 4, and currently Street Fighter 5, which now is going to the Champion Edition. So things get... Capcom is known for reselling their game and just adding a new coat of paint every, every once in a while. So they kind of make a bad habit out of it. So yeah. Plus there's the arcade version that's going to 25 ports to other systems. So I don't know if that's going to come. Exactly my point. It is. The best way I can probably describe Smash Brothers is, well, I've heard this from Maximilian Dude. Shout out to the guy. Been checking out his content. Awesome YouTuber and all that. He pretty much says it's the Disneyland of fighting games. And I have to agree. There's just no other way to put it. This is like, it's literally like one of the happiest things ever made. Like the best things ever made. You know how Disney is like the, the happiest place on earth? Well, this is technically like the, the happiest game ever made because it's just so full of content. You've pleased so many people. It's just amazing. It's so mind-blowing how much content is in that little cartridge, that little Switch cartridge. And there's more to come. How exactly? <coughs> <laughs> Take a break, man. So I hope you can continue to support us. That's it. Thank you. Bravo. Bravo. Wow. I mean, I'm just overall impressed. So much stuff that's just being crammed into this game. Is there even a limit at all? The last thing I want is for this game to crash. Man. I'm just speechless how there's going to be like six more DLC fighters coming this way. So, oh, we got to be, um, got to be on the lookout for the next ones. See what happens next. See what other crazy content can get implemented in the, in Ultimate. This thing is just, wow. I mean, there's no words to describe it. This thing just gets bigger and better every time. No game is going to top this. No future installment of Smash Brothers is going to top this. This is just mind-blowing. And I mean freaking mind-blowing. I won't be surprised if they eventually reach up to like 100 characters. But this is just wow. Right now, when it comes to like other characters, the whole thing is up in the air. Right? Anything can happen. I'm just surprised overall at the dedication that Sakurai has. As far back as Melee, when he was literally pushing himself to his limits and created one of the best games on the GameCube. And some even say that it's 
quite possibly one of the finest games ever made by even by Smash professionals. Kind of wonder like the last thing I want is for him to have like some kind of a serious illness or just forced to retire because of his over dedication to the series and I just want him to somehow or some way take a break because he deserves it. There's no other way to put it. This guy has been working his butt off like you have no idea. So that's all for now. It's been fun to watch this. It's been fun to do this little reaction video and uh, well <laughs> until next time. Maybe I can upload something else eventually aside from uh, react videos. Been a little busy with other things here and there but I'm trying to juggle two things at once. So until next time Take care. Peace.